Charlie Chaplin was a famous comedic actor, director, scriptwriter, editor, music composer, film producer, and author. He was best known for his silent films of the 1920s through to the 1940s. Hilarious flicks like The Gold Rush, <laughs> City Lights, Modern Times, The Kid, The Great Dictator, and one of my favorites, A Dog's Life, <laughs> just to name a few. Today we're going to make a Charlie Chaplin cocktail a cocktail that was invented before 1920. It was one of the featured drinks being made at the Waldorf Astoria in New York City. And it appears in A.S. Crockett's 1935 The Old Waldorf Astoria Bar Book. It's a sweet cocktail with lots of fruit flavors that nobody's talking about. Here are a few things you might not know about this slapstick genius. His name was Charles Spencer Chaplin, born on April 16, 1889. One would guess he got his talent from his parents. You see, they were both in the entertainment industry, but died when he was young. His father, Charlie Chaplin Sr., was a well-known English music hall entertainer and singer. The nature of the music hall performing was, well, it was a funny business back then, whereby stars were expected to encourage customers to purchase drinks. This led many in the industry to become alcoholics. Well, Charlie Sr. was one of these and died from alcohol abuse at age 38. His mother, Hannah, whose stage name was Lily Harley, was an English actress, singer, and dancer who performed in British music halls as well. Her career, though, was plagued by on and off health issues. During one particular performance, her voice failed and it was her son, five-year-old Charlie Chaplin, who got his first taste of performing when he went on stage as an impromptu replacement. Hannah's health continued to decline and deteriorated into a state of dementia and eventually she was committed to a mental asylum. As a result, Charlie and his older half-brother Sidney were sent to a public boarding school for orphans and destitute children. Charlie realized he had to start working at a very early age to feed himself. Charlie Chaplin made his professional debut as a member of a children's group called the Eight Lancashire Lads. He soon won popular favor as an outstanding tap dancer and started working as a comedian in vaudeville. He made his way to the United States in 1910. There he toured with the Fred Carnot Repertoire Company and soon after was offered a motion picture contract from Max Sennett and the Keystone Film Company. That was 1913 and his initial salary was $150 a week. By 1915, Charlie moved on to the s &A Company with a large increase in salary. The following year, he was even in more demand and uh, signed with the Mutual Film Corporation for a much larger sum. He was a superstar, making a whopping $670,000 a year. Holy shit. that's a lot of flipping money, eh? That's a lot of money today. <laughs> Wish I made that much. <laughs> By 1919, Charlie Chaplin joined with Mary Pickford, Douglas Fairbanks, and D.W. Griffith to found the United Artists Corporation. The reason was it allowed actors to control their own interests rather than being dependent upon commercial studios. Charlie Chaplin was the first actor who appeared on Time Magazine's cover in 1925. He had four wives and 11 children. Charlie first got married in 1918 to 17-year-old actress Mildred Harris, but got divorced two years later. Four years after that, he married 16-year-old Lita Gray, another actress with whom he had a bitter breakup with two years later. In 1936, he married Paulette Goddard. She was a 26-year-old chorus girl, but divorced her in 1942. That was followed by a nasty paternity suit with another actress, Joan Barry, in which Tess proved he was not the father of her daughter, but a jury still ordered him to pay child support. Then in 1943, the fourth time was the charm. Charlie married 18-year-old Una O'Neill. He was 54 and went on to have a happy marriage for the rest of his life. He met Gandhi in London in 1931 and became friends with Albert Einstein. Einstein once told him, what I admire about your art is your universality. You don't say a word, yet the world understands you. <laughs> Charlie replied, true, but your fame is even greater. The world admires you when nobody understands what you say. 
Did you know that Charlie Chaplin's daughter, Geraldine Chaplin, played the part of his mother in the 1992 film called Chaplin? The United States essentially exiled him. Despite living there for almost 40 years, Chaplin never became an American citizen. Meanwhile, due in part to modern times, a satire of the machine age, he gained a reputation as a communist sympathizer. During the McCarthy era, the FBI put him under surveillance and a Mississippi congressman called for his deportation. The US government then revoked his re-entry permit in 1952 while he was in England on vacation. Rather than returning to answer charges before a board of immigration officials, Charlie decided to move to Switzerland. He only visited the United States one more time in 1972 to accept an honorary Academy Award. Now this is funny. He may or may not have entered a Charlie Chaplin look-alike walk contest. You know that walk. I don't even know how to do that properly. I got the cane though. <laughs> he lost miserably and different sources tell us that he came in 20th or 27th place. No one knows for sure. Uh, who knows if it's even true? Charlie will never tell. Charlie Chaplin was never trained musically and couldn't read sheet music, but he did have a passion for music. As a child, he taught himself how to play the piano, violin, and cello. He composed many a fine song, among them Sing a Song with You Dear in Bombay, There's Always One You Can't Forget, Eternally, You Are My Song, and my favorite from 1936 called Smile. I love that song. He originally wrote it as an instrumental, but two lyricists named John Turner and Jeffrey Parsons added lyrics to it, giving it a sense of melancholy and, and a little optimism too. Shortly after Charlie Chaplin died on Christmas Day 1977, two men made off with his body and demanded a ransom of 600,000 Swiss francs for his return. A few weeks later, his body was recovered and the, the bungling robbers were caught. He was then reburied in a theft-proof concrete vault. Okay, <laughs> I've spoken enough. Back to the Charlie Chaplin cocktail. While it was made in Charlie's honor, no one seems to know if he ever drank one. Hmm.
Smile, though your heart is aching. Smile, even though it's breaking. When there are clouds in the sky, you'll get by. If you smile through your pain and sorrow, smile and the ouch!